All right. Thanks for tuning into my first drill analysis segment, which will become a regular feature of my website. One of the most frequent comments that I get from coaches that I speak with is that they don't really understand what a skill acquisition specialist does. So the purpose of these videos is to show you a little bit of what I do. I'm going to scour the internet for videos of drills and practice activities and then critically evaluate them through my skill acquisition lens. I want to show you how some of the principles that underpin good learning environments might come into play into everyday practice. Now, before I get going, I want to throw out a quick disclaimer. My intention behind these videos is to help coaches grow. Coaching is not an easy gig, so I'm not trying to be critical. I don't know what the motivation behind these drills is or how they're being applied within the bigger practice plan. I'm simply evaluating what I'm seeing as an expert in skill acquisition. My goal is to find opportunities to help coaches transform what they do, improve their engagement with their players, and hopefully learn to win. With that in mind, in each of these videos, I'm going to be picking out some of the good things that are happening in the drill, as well as where there might be opportunities to try something different to improve learning. A little approach I picked up from my old colleague at the Australian Institute of Sport, Daniel Greenwood. With that out of the way, let's take a look at our first drill analysis. From what I can gather, this drill is a shooting drill done at the end of practice when players are tired. It's a game where the player starts with a score of 5, and for every shot they make, they get 1 point, and for every shot they miss, they lose 1 point. They keep shooting until they score 10 points and win, or drop to 0 points and lose. Pretty cool idea. So what do I like about this drill? First of all, I like that the players are performing skills at the end of practice when they're tired. A lot of times we get players to perform skills while they're fresh and abandon practice when they get tired and things start to get a little bit messy. A colleague of mine, Professor Damien Farrow, had a slide in some of his presentations that said skill equals technique plus pressure, which to me really stresses that it's not enough to perform skillfully, you need to be able to perform those skills under a variety of conditions. Second, I'm a big fan of the way the drill is competitive. Gamification can be a great way to improve player engagement and motivation. Rather than just robotically taking shots at the end of practice, this strategy makes each shot a little bit more meaningful and prevents the athlete from switching off. A bit of trash talk in there never hurts either. Finally, and probably a minor point, there's not really any feedback from the coach. He's letting the player take his shots and not trying to correct them. In this case, that's probably the best approach. No need to worry about minor corrections, it's all about the outcome. Now let's take a look at where there could be some opportunities to change the drill to improve the player's learning. The big thing that jumps out at me right away is that every shot is taken from the exact <laughs> same spot. I'd suggest taking shots from a different location each time. This is in line with the concept of specificity, which says that the best transfer from practice to the game occurs when the practice conditions are closer to the game conditions. And I can't think of many examples where dozens of shots are taken from the same spot over and over in a game. I won't get into them here, but there can also be other benefits for learning which are traced back to blocked and random practice, and a concept called contextual interference. Another modification to this drill that could be useful would be to include an opponent to contest the shots. Outside of free throws, there aren't many shots taken in basketball games that don't have some type of contest. The presence of an opponent is related to a concept called perception-action coupling, which means that there are actions are influenced by the information available in the environment, and vice versa. In this case, and in research on basketball shooting by Adam Gorman and Michael Maloney, the lack of an opponent can change the way the player shoots, and including an opponent can make the actions more game-like. So, in summary, this looks like a fun end-of-practice drill that tests players' skills under fatigue and introduces a bit of competition. The drill could be modified to improve learning by increasing the amount of variability and having an opponent contest the shots. And that's my first drill analysis in the books. <laughs> if you'd like to discuss having your drills evaluated to help you grow your coaching and find new ways to learn to win, get in touch with me through my website, www.learntowin.com.au or shoot an email to derek at learntowin.com.au. Thanks and see you next time.